I've been telling you all that vehicle ranges will increase significantly over the next decade. Here is proof it's happening right now, and it's not happening in a small way. This is a big way. I'm talking about the world's largest electric battery company showing their new batteries that were made en masse and be in many vehicles probably by the start of next year with a huge increase in energy density, even more than 4680 cells. And when it comes to LFP cells, we're talking about a 20% improvement in range. That is next level. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm exhausted saying all that, but it's exciting. It's exciting news. I'm the Electric Viking. Hope you're as excited as I am to hear about this news, which I'm about to share with you because seriously, this proves my point I've been blabbing on about to you all, which is that by the end of this decade, the range of electric vehicles will have doubled for no additional cost. What does that mean? Well, that means you could basically have a range vehicle today, right? Average range of an electric vehicle today might be about 450 kilometers. That would mean that the price of one of those models will be significantly cheaper than what it will be today. Meaning electric cars will be cheaper to own, cheaper to run, and cheaper to buy in 2030. In fact, I think it'll happen several years before that. What's happening? CATL is by far the world's largest battery manufacturer. Also, they manufacture LFP batteries for Tesla and a number of other companies such as Neo, BMW, Mercedes, Hyundai, Honda, Lee Auto, PSA, Toyota, Volkswagen, and x -Pun. Yeah, that's a lot, right? Who's going to be getting these batteries first? So what's all this about? CATL have announced their third generation cell-to-pack battery technology. And they're saying, right, that the NCM version or nickel cobalt manganese version will actually have a higher energy density at the pack level, in fact, significantly higher, than Tesla's structural 4680 packs. That is kind of crazy, right? Even more importantly, the official launch of these batteries is said to happen in April this year. And CATL say that they will be prepared for mass production on a essentially global scale by the start of 2023. So we're talking what? Less than nine months before these products are available to, well, en masse, primarily to their biggest customer, Tesla, but also to some of their other customers as well, including Neo. Here's a quote from the company. Financial Associated Press on March 26th, Wu Kai, chief scientist of CATL, said at the China Electric Vehicle 100 Forum that CATL has launched the third generation cell to pack technology through continuous technical iteration, which is called Kirin battery internally. Weight, energy density, and volumetric energy density continue to lead the industry at the highest level. Under the same chemical system and the same battery pack size, the power of the Kirin battery can be increased by 13% compared to the 4680 system. The reporter was informed that this battery will be officially released in April this year and go into mass production by the end of the year. So what is great about cell-to-pack battery packs is that without modules and excessive cabling, they are easier, faster, and cheaper to assemble. The less passive material, the better, the lower the weight as well. Since what really matters is the active material battery cells that actually store energy. Cell-to-pack technology is only possible to use with safe battery cells that don't easily burn or explode when damaged. Therefore, it's perfect for lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now, currently, the main producer of cell to pack lithium iron phosphate batteries is BYD. Let's have a look at the energy density specs of this third generation battery pack from CATL. The LFP version now comes in at 160 watt per kilogram. Now the crazy thing is, right, that Tesla's currently using CATL's version, that's only 125 watts per kilo. So we're going to go from 125 watts per kilo to 160 watts per kilo. Now, obviously, right, CATL are building this massive new factory three kilometers down the road from Tesla's Gigafactory, which is going to provide 70 gigawatt hours per year of batteries for Tesla. Clearly, they're not building a new factory with their old technology, right? It's going to have these new batteries, clearly. It would make the most sense. So these new battery packs, being built by CATL for Tesla 
will have an improvement of 28% in energy density. 28%. That is enormous and should translate to a massive increase in range, at least a 20% increase in range. What about the NCM version? Well, the NCM version, which who knows who's going to get those batteries. It could be Tesla, it could be other car companies as well. I know Neo is going to get those for sure. Has a volumetric energy density of 450 watts per litre and a gravimetric energy density of 250 watts per kilogram. So not double the LFP version, but it's pretty high, 250 watts per kilo. That's going to provide vehicles with a massive improvement in range Companies currently using CATL's batteries, such as NEO. Well, I just bought NEO stock. Here's one of the reasons. You can see the advantages, right? What's GM going to do? What's Ford going to do? What's all the companies not using these batteries on mass going to do? Well, they're going to have to compete against these numbers. They're going to have to compete against the fact that also CATL is the world's cheapest battery manufacturer and is the biggest. So companies that buy batteries from CATL and have placed big contract orders with them, such as Tesla, have a big advantage over the next couple of years. Now, right now, the most popular cell to pack technology with cobalt-free battery cells is the BYD Blade battery using, obviously, lithium iron phosphate battery cells. Now, the Blade battery started at an energy density of 140 watts per kilo, but it's already reached 150 watts per kilo in the long-range version of the BYD Yen Plus and also in the new BYD Han. BYD is starting to move their new packs into these vehicles. And you see, as they update the models, we find out the new range. For example, the range of the old Han was just over 600 kilometers. The new version is now just over 700. Obviously, that's an unrealistic cycle, but you get the point. The range is dramatically increased. So Tesla made in China Model 3 vehicles and Model Y vehicles get their LFP packs upgraded by CATL, I'm assuming probably within 10 months, and it'll be using these new batteries. That means energy density in all standard range Tesla vehicles using CATL battery cells. By the way, they're using them in America as well, probably going to use them in the factory in Germany as well, will be increased by 28% with no increase in weight of the vehicle. If anything, the vehicle is going to become lighter because we're going to be using what? Giga castings, which will reduce the weight of the car by probably a couple hundred, maybe at least 150 kilograms, right? So you're looking at a, a, a loss in weight of 150 kilograms, plus then you're increasing energy density of the battery by 28%. What's going to happen, right? Range is going to improve by a minimum of 20%. That's a huge difference. If, for example, the range is 400 kilometers, you're then looking at a range of 480 kilometers. That's a massive difference for no extra cost. Now, considering that CHL is currently the main LFP battery supplier of Tesla, this will happen soon. In addition to that, obviously, Tesla also has a contract this year with BYD to supply them with their lithium iron phosphate blade batteries as well. Now, as you can see, LFP batteries are the future of the battery industry. The prices are so much lower than NCM, NCA chemistry batteries, and they aren't affected by these enormous cost strains on the industry, such as the cost of nickel going up by enormous amounts of money and then therefore affecting the cost of batteries for all these car companies that are outside of China, except for Tesla. So getting back to the other battery, like let's have a think about this for a second. CHL is saying, they're basically saying, hey, Tesla, guess what? Our pack, our new NCM chemistry pack, uses cobalt. Yeah, that's sort of a bummer. But anyway, it's 13% more energy dense at the pack level than your 4680s, do you want to come and use it? That is what I think they're saying to Tesla. I mean, they're really making a song and dance about this, right? They're not only saying it to Tesla, they're saying it to Tesla's competitors as well. Come buy these from us. They're even better than Tesla, right? Now, another thing they mentioned that was quite interesting is they said in addition to teasing their Kirin battery to the public and releasing these specifications, that CATL's 1,000 kilometer range heat diffusion free battery technology will be in mass production by 2023. So they're saying they're going to have a battery which will have 1,000 kilometers of range and have heat diffusion free battery technology. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but as soon as I find out all the details, I'll let you know. I do know one thing though, and I believe that that heat diffusion free battery technology may be a reference to what CHL have been working on with NEO. At NEO Day 2020, last January 9th, NEO unveiled the 150 kilowatt hour pack at the launch 
of the company's flagship sedan, the ET7. Very, very cool looking car, by the way. Love to own one. Bringing high energy density batteries to the forefront of many people's minds. So CATL said that they are developing a 150 kilowatt hour pack solution for NEO using ultra high nickel technology. And it appears as though this could be the pack that NEO will use. In other words, potentially NEO could have basically a structural battery pack with a higher energy density than Tesla's 4680 packs. The report cited investors close to NEO as saying the electric vehicle company started preparations for a 150 kilowatt hour semi-solid state battery pack project in 2019 and was looking to CATL for a solution. So that's all I know about that so far. But getting back to the key issue here, really for me, the, the fundamental point of sharing this video with you is just to tell you how good this is, right? It's great. It's proving my point. Energy density is improving every year, every single year. Most experts predict energy density will have doubled by the end of the decade versus where it's at at the start of this decade, meaning that for you, electric cars will be cheaper. The range will be longer. If you want to pay more, you get even longer range. I realistically think electric cars with a range of 1,000 kilometers will be very, very common by the end of the decade. And they'll be largely affordable depending on the size of the vehicle. Obviously to have a, an electric pickup truck with 1,000 kilometers of range is never really gonna be cheap per se, but it's never been cheap to buy one of those vehicles period anyway. However, the key point is that at some time between now and 2030, electric vehicles with the same equivalent ranges will be cheaper than internal combustion engine vehicles. Now that time, is pretty pretty much almost already there in China. So they'll get there quicker than the rest of the world, but the point is, it will happen, and boy, is it an exciting time to be alive. Thanks for watching the channel. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.